die is cast. Those words were uttered by Julius Caesar, one of the greatest generals of all times, when he crossed the Rubicon. The Rubicon was a river that marked the boundary of Italy, that uh, separated Italy perhaps from the rest of the empire, what you'd call proper Rome now. It was a standing tradition and Roman law that whenever a general came back from a campaign, from a military campaign, or perhaps he was now returning after the expiry of his term as head of a Roman province, they were required to disband their army before crossing this river that was a boundary. Julius Caesar, when crossing the Rubicon with his army, was violating a serious law. Did Raila Odinga cross the Rubicon yesterday, Friday, when he returned to the country from his US trip? You could say yes. The government through security agencies had said Raila would not be met by his supporters. They had blocked them. They were not supposed to access the airport, but they did access the airport. You could see that this as crossing the road because he was not supposed to be received and he was not supposed to get to the city in a procession with his jubilant supporters, but this did happen. Unfortunately, in the course of this, lives were lost, property was destroyed, dreams were shattered. The question I want to ask, should we as a country allow ourselves to get in situations that could make the outside world think Kenya is one big mental hospital where people make irrational decisions? How do you explain a simple thing like this? How would the government not understand that actions such as those that they took yesterday would have led to anarchy, loss of lives? I have two ways of explaining this. Either the government doesn't act from advice, or doesn't receive advice, or receives awkward advice, or ignores advice. Serious advice would have told the government it was very easy to allow the procession to and from the airport through Jogo Road, Outer Ring Road, Airport North Road, and thereby leaving Mombasa Road free for traffic, people traveling to and from the airport. Yesterday, many people missed their flights. That was bad. Or if you can't explain it in that manner, there is another way I think I want to explain this situation. Perhaps the government is rehearsing what they will do if the Supreme Court upholds Uhuru's victory and his sworn in. Perhaps they want to see whether they can manage the reactions of the NASA supporters. Uh, but really, going forward, I think this is not the way to do things. Uh, what have we learned from this? Two things. One. We have learned that we can easily destroy our country. Two, we have learned that the police is not as strong as we thought or think it is. Yesterday, NASA supporters were able to walk through the tear gas, smokes of it. They were able to walk through the water cannons. They were able to ignore the gunshots. The police say there were no guns used, but laymen like us think there was, just from the sound of gunshots. Maybe we are wrong, but they were able to ignore this. That tells you going forward, it might not be as easy as the government might think in terms of controlling the, 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 the crowds, the rioters, mobs. So we need a different approach to managing our politics. But one is asking, why were people able to brave the police, the tear gas, the water cannons? I want to tell the government it's the anger that people have. Anger not just because one side of the political divide in this country feels like they are being treated like second-hand citizens, but because of 
very obviously simple but irritating things. In the year 1992, Kenneth Matiba was received no, from the airport. That was during Moy's reg regime of all times. Nobody stopped the Matiba. He was received. Nairobi came to a standstill. Matiba was Akikuyu. He is Akikuyu. In the year 2002, President Kibaki was received when he came from England where he had gone to seek treatment after the accident that he was involved in. Nairobi again came to a standstill. Moi was in power. Nobody stopped the people from receiving their leader. Kibaki was Akikuyu. Recently, President Uhuru went to the ICC and came back. Kenyans were happy. We were very happy our president had come back from ICC. People had thought he would be detained there. We went to receive him. Nairobi came to a standstill. Nobody stopped him. Nobody stopped anybody. President Uhuru Kenyatta is a Kikuyu. Now that Raila wants to be received by his supporters, he is stopped. Raila is a Luo. These are the kind of realities as a country we must deal with. If we, we ignore these simple realities, we are setting ourselves for destruction, which we must avoid at all costs. This was a simple thing. Let Raila come. Let him be received. Four or five hours, the thing will be over. No car will have been destroyed. No life would have been lost. The international media has painted us in very bad light. In fact, the world thought Kenya was coming to an end. That's not good for us. It's not good for the image of the country. This country is bleeding. This country is suffering. There's no business going on. We have to stop this. But perhaps... The best way, like I've said before, is for the two gentlemen, Uhuru Kenyatta, Raila Odinga, to sit down. On Monday, this next week, a couple of two days from now, the Supreme Court makes a decision whether to uphold Uhuru's victory or to annul it. My submission is, if the Supreme Court nullifies this election, God will indeed be speaking through the two ladies and four gentlemen of the Supreme Court to save this country. I'm not violating the rule of subjudice. I'm not saying they should nullify. But I'm just saying if they nullify this election, it will be God giving Kenya another chance. A chance to start afresh. A chance where Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga will sit down and save this country from destruction. Because that's where we are headed. If you, if you are a Kenyan, if you watch keenly, if you saw the way young men are able to defy the police, that speaks volumes of what is going to happen in the future. And the moment the police become helpless, that is the moment we are setting ourselves for anarchy. The, the police and security agents always succeed because the people are always held back by fear. Normally you throw a tear gas and the crowds disperse. Yesterday, not one, not two, not ten. Hundreds of tear gas canisters exploded. There was smoke all over. The young men defied that. The water cannon, that liquid, if a bit of it touches your skin, man, you can scratch yourself for a week. But the young men defied that. And I'm saying, going forward, the moment we have a population of defiant people who don't care that the police are marching towards them, we are creating a state that we shall not control. So I am just appealing, whether the Supreme Court upholds this election or not, I am appealing for president, to President Uru Kenyatta Prime Minister Raila Odinga, save this country. Save this country for our children, for our grandchildren, for future generations, by doing what you need to do, which is sit down and discuss the way forward.
even if that means another round of fresh elections.